This is Beyond Category, and I'm Eric Felton. We're here at the Blues Alley Jazz Supper Club in Washington, D.C., to hear the terrific jazz guitar player Kevin Eubanks. Kevin first made his name on the New York jazz scene of the 1980s, and then came to fame leading the band on the popular late-night TV show, The Tonight Show. He's here at Blues Alley with his band tonight. We get to check him out right now. Thank you. 
Kevin Eubanks, that was fantastic. Thanks, thanks, yeah. for, having, thanks for having me here. Man. Thanks for being on the time. show. Right. So we're, we're gonna get to talking about your remarkable guitar playing, but before we do that, I wanna hear about how when you were a little kid, right. Sarah Vaughn, Nancy Wilson, some of the greatest singers in jazz would come by your house, and how did that happen? Well, because my, uncle, uh, my uncles, uh, Tommy and Ray Bryant, um, would, they were playing at the Showboat all the time, which was a really big spot, a hot spot in Philadelphia. And Ray was the house piano player. So all the singers that came in and a lot of the, the small groups, Ray played piano for everybody. So for rehearsals, they would come to my, my mother's house because she's a uh, classical and gospel piano. And uh, so she had a piano that was always kept in tune. <laughs> so Ray would always ask her, could he bring by musicians so they could rehearse because they had to play, you know, the showboat. And uh, my brother and I, Robin, so we were kids just playing. We were playing whatever games we played as kids. And then they would come in and everybody would say, you know, be quiet, be quiet. My mother would say, don't bother them. They're, you know, and we just sit there and we would just, you know, want them to get done so we can keep, <laughs> you know, uh, keep playing and everything. So, but we would hear all of that and uh, Papa Joe Jones would be there and he'd always do magic tricks. He's always put a, pull a quarter out of his ear and, and, and everything. So, and we didn't know who all these people were. We just knew we had to be quiet for a while while he did that. And I was really shy as a kid, still am. Um, so I would always want to be out of the way when they were doing it because I never wanted to be seen by people. So all of that was happening at the same time. But, you know, um, do you think you soaked anything up from that as a, well, as a kid? Yeah. I mean, I don't think you can help it. I think you're a product of your environment to a great extent. And so when you hear all this music, my mother was always teaching piano lessons. And so when uh, Ray and everybody would come over and rehearse, it, it gets inside of you and um, when the time comes, I guess that helps when you when you get finally arrive at committing yourself to being a musician. All of that stuff helps. Now, of course, this was in Philadelphia. You grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And Philly is one of the places that has had such a distinctive hip music scene, all, all of its own. Always, how is yeah. growing up in Philadelphia, how much has that affected you as a musician? Uh, greatly. Um, ever since I was a kid, all I did was play music in Philly. I started violin when I was seven. Um, and uh, my parents said, don't play violin because you're going to quit. You're not going to stay with violin. And at... Um, Do you still play any violin? No, I quit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and started playing guitar, which is one of my musical regrets, was that I stopped playing violin. Not, not that I started playing guitar. I wish I had played both. But ever since I was seven and I started playing guitar, and you played in the neighborhood bands, and it was great. You playing with musicians in the neighborhood and in Philly. And what kind of music everywhere. were you playing with the the local band funk, that was your neighborhood? Yeah, funk and rock music. You and know. probably were you playing for dances and parties oh, yeah. and things. Parties. And, that, that was it. Uh, proms, after proms, dances, whatever, weddings, everything. But when you're a kid and you're 14 years old and you're you know on the weekends you're working, you're rehearsing during the week, you're on the weekends. I mean, you're working and you're getting things done. I, I think more jazz musicians these days, a lot of jazz musicians, they do the conservatory thing and, mm -hmm. you know, and it's all very cloistered. Right. And I think a lot more jazz musicians could stand to play funk gigs for dancing. You know, yeah, I, kind of... I think a lot, a lot of them do. Um, at least they had it, they did at some point. And then you go to school for a lot of technical uh, expertise and I always played with people that were older than me so they're always driving me so I didn't want to drive till I was 26 because I was so used to people <laughs> taking me everywhere <laughs> oh, it, was, it was terrible <laughs> but you know you were you also not only with your uncles 
being ar around and introducing you to, to jazz from a young age, but, mm -hmm. but I've heard you talk about how one of the great things about jazz is it's a kind of music, and not all musics are like this, where you in your teens or 20s can be playing with people who are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and, yeah. and really, yeah. really interacting with them and, and right. making music together. Yeah, I think that's uh, a wonderful thing that goes highly overlooked. It, it only happens in certain types of genres of music, but you learn a lot of things. You know, you get experiences from people that are 65, 70 years old, and you're 19 years old, you're 20 or 25 even, or even 30 or whatever. Um, but you, you're working with people that have seen a lot of life. Well, I'd love to hear something else. Uh, get the guys back up, and uh, what can you do for us? Um, well, we have a, a version of uh, Summertime Gershwin that, tune. Um, that I've been working on, so um, we can give that a go. All right, let's check it out. All right. Kevin Eubanks. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Kevin Eubanks, that was beautiful. Really? Thank it, you, It man. was. Thank was. you. Thanks. So you, of course, not only got to be known by lots of people in your jazz career hitting the scene in the 80s in New York, but then to a much, much broader audience as band leader of the Tonight Show band mm -hmm. uh, for 15 years as, as the band leader. Mm -hmm. um, how did that change and affect your approach, outlook to music being intermixed with so many different kinds of music. You had to do every kind of music on that show mm. and learn about it and really get inside of each kind of music, not just be able to mm. kind of cover a style, but really get inside it. Well, I don't think it changed that much um, because I was into a lot of different types of music. You know, like we were talking earlier about growing up, I played a lot of different types of music when I was growing up. So I think that's one of the things that made it a bit easier for me to get into a situation like that and be successful at it because I was always open to different types of music so that part wasn't a big deal to me. I got more into uh, country music and a lot more into blues um, while I was doing it because I got to hang out with these musicians. I got to hang out with uh, Willie Nelson a lot. Um, so and do, you, do you learn about their approach to their music in ways that you might not otherwise have a chance just from listening to the music? Well, once you become kind of friends with people, then you start to see the music in them. It's kind of inseparable. So once you start to um, like them, you start to see their music a little better. I was hanging out with Clint Black for a while, and you start to see that these people, they, they're they just as dedicated to what they do as you are to what you do, and they work really hard at it. They're great at it. And once you get into that environment, and it's just some more music, um, it, it's, it's just... A joy to go to work when you got when you have to do that, and never think like, "Oh, I got to do this. Why? Wow, how do I do? This? You know, how do I play this?" You can hear all these different elements in your guitar playing, whether mm -hmm. it's Wes Montgomery and I, I hear some Jimi Hendrix in there, yeah. and and the blues. But you sound like you. You've you've created something new and fresh and original out of all of those elements, instead mm -hmm. of like a pastiche of those elements. What are you trying to get? Well, I think that really all comes from. Um, something my mother said, and that was, you know, Kevin's just going to do what he want to do. He's hard-headed. <laughs> so I think that comes through, <laughs> you know. So she said, whatever you tell him, he's, he's, he's going to have to try his own way. Um, but when you have so much respect for all the different kinds of music, I mean, it's, it's just good to be able to, um, to play all the different idioms but still have your own voice. I don't think there's anything you can practice about that. Um, it just... Each individual deals with that separately. Kevin, we've got about enough time for one more tune. What could you guys do for us? Uh, we're going to do a kind of a condensed version of a song that could really go on for like 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> um, it's called 6-8, and um, it has a, a couple uh, sections to it. It's kind of a fun tune to play. I don't, I don't know what you really call it. it it's kind of, um, I don't know, it's just a lot of fun. It's, it, it blends a little bit of rock and a very small amount of rock um, and uh, some straight ahead stuff, but I don't know, it's just, it's hard to describe, so I hope you enjoy it. Let's check it out. All right. Kevin Eubanks.
like to thank Kevin Eubanks and his band for joining us today, Blues Alley for hosting us, and most of all, I'd like to thank you for watching. My name's Eric Felton. I hope you'll join us again for more good music on Beyond Category.